with a poll like this, uh, forget the hot takes. What you need is a prof, a prof of politics. I've got one, Roger Owen Scully from Cardiff University. Um, we're standing here like a pair of weathermen looking yes. at the, uh, mm -hmm. uh, this. Well, I, I mean, I think it is a forecast of turbulent times uh, and settled weather. Indeed, very stormy political times indeed. I mean, what we're seeing in this new opinion poll is in some respects completely unprecedented. The parts of this poll that we simply have never seen in any Welsh opinion poll ever conducted before. And we're seeing on the screen the Westminster voting yes. intentions. What do they say? Well. We, we see here you know, the Labour Party, the historically dominant party in Wales, not in the lead, and that is unusual but not unprecedented. The Conservatives are in a narrow lead here. They were, of course, in the lead at the start of the 2017 general election campaign. But I think what is so unusual here is to see just how far the Labour Party support has fallen. This is their wor Labour's worst ever opinion poll result for Westminster in Wales. Um, and their support has more or less halved since just December last year. So, I mean, that is you know, really astonishing stuff. So just to be clear on these two things, worst ever poll? Yes. Uh, I mean, going back... As, as you know, I've got a complete record of opinion polls of course, this century know. and uh, late in the last century, but I've, I've looked through the records. I cannot find Labour as low as 22% in a general election opinion poll in Wales ever. And what does it tell us about the other parties? Well, I think the key, key other thing you see here is just the fragmentation. I mean, you know, the leading party is not on even 25% of the vote. Plaid Cymru are on what is, by all historic standards, a pretty good polling results for them, and they've never got as much as 15% of the vote in a general election, yet they're in fifth place. So we're seeing here not two-party politics or three-party politics, but apparently five-party politics. And I think, you know, translating this sort of vote share distribution in a general election into actual seat can, can outcomes do, well, I think we can see yeah, the, would be uh, very complicated. So, uh, the, as always with seat projections, yes. you have important warnings. Yes, indeed. I mean, what I've used here is the standard method, which is simply taking the changes in vote share from the last general election, projecting that in a uniform manner across Wales, and this is the outcome it gives us. So, you know, Labour still having the most seats, but this, in fact, would be the first time that Labour not won a majority of seats at the general election in Wales for more than a century, you know, since December 1918. Um, we see the Conservatives being the big winners here, but I think, you know, we do have to be very cautious here. With party support flying all over the place, with in particular support for Labour and Conservatives having collapsed in the last six or eight months, in practice, I think a general election would be highly unpredictable and you might well see seats that have been held by a party for a very long time, you know, yielding surprise, surprise results. One other thing we should note about this result, the Liberal Democrats back on the map. Our poll projecting them, again, with all of these um, you know, hazard warnings, whatever, projecting them to win two seats, you know, re-establishing them um, after, of course, they lost their last Welsh seat in the last general election. I mean, that's the Westminster um, voting intention yeah. situation. Um, let's talk about the Assembly. Yeah. Uh, obviously, the well, we assume, no, never yes. assume, but the next election is going to be what, 2021. Yes. Um, let's have a look at the picture then. And here, again, we have unprecedented results. Plaid Cymru have never before been in the lead on the Assembly constituency never. voting intention. Never. This has never happened before. The Labour Party, you know, the historically dominant party, right now have nearly half the seats in the Assembly, down at just 21%. Again, their support has more or less halved in around the last seven months. Um, again, we see a fragmentation between the parties, so more or less five significant parties. And we see the Liberal Democrats, you know, re establishing themselves as some sort of significant force and getting back in the game. That, I think, is also a very important part of this poll, because if we think about you know, what might happen after an assembly election, if the Liberal Democrats are back in the assembly with a reasonable number of seats, suddenly all sorts of possibilities for coalitions, minority governments and things, come back on the table, which are not possible at the moment with the Liberal Democrats not there. The, that's not the full picture of the Assembly votes, yeah. of course, because that's a constituency vote. There's also the regional list. Yes. Um, so let's have a little look and see how that uh, shows up in our poll. Well, again, we have Plaid Cymru in the lead, which, again, they have never before been in the lead on this vote either in a Welsh opinion poll. And again, we see Labour, as they did for Westminster, as they did for the Assembly constituency vote, getting their worst ever uh, projected result. 19% Labour have never been this low for the Assembly regional vote. 
We again also see the five party politics. The votes split at least five ways. The Liberal Democrats, again, a significant presence. But the Brexit party, you know, they're down a bit from the poll we took just before the European elections, but they're still there as a significant force um, and, you know, potentially you know, on course for winning quite a few seats in the next National Assembly. And we're focusing on Labour's uh, yeah. decline for obvious reasons yes. because it's been so dominant. Um, but in terms of the parties that have benefit, I hear what you're saying about the, uh, it being dispersed amongst lots of yeah. different parties. But I suppose for Plaid Cymru, it's, 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 th th that is, I suppose that's one of the big stories of this poll, isn't it, Plaid Cymru uh, mm. doing extremely well? Well, Plaid Cymru in the lead. We should notice, though, that that lead has come out not so much from Plaid Cymru's vote share going up. It's hardly edged up at all in this poll, but they have you know, improved marginally while the other parties have sort of declined past them. Mm -hmm. um, and so Plaid, in a sense, have become leaders almost by default through the weakness, particularly, of the traditional major parties. Um, can you say why this has been happening? I mean, we've looked at the yes. picture in Westminster, mm -hmm. looked at the picture in the Assembly, in both bits yes. of the Assembly. Is there any, any reasons yes. that the, 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 the poll is telling you or other yes. polling is telling you? Well, I think our new Welsh poll very much fits with what the broader UK picture is saying, which is basically a collapsing confidence in the two major traditional parties. The Conservatives, their failure to deliver Brexit, you know, the other elements of chaos in the government at Westminster, and the Labour Party. Jeremy Corbyn now, a deeply unpopular leader with most of the public, you know, problems over anti-Semitism and other, other issues like that. You know, both Labour and Conservative are severely lacking in public trust at the moment, and lots of voters, whether because of Brexit or for other reasons, are looking at elsewhere. Okay, well, let's move on to others. Oh, actually, no, we need to look at the oh, seat projection. I forgot, seat I almost projection. forgot. Use the same caveats as before. Again, I think we should be very cautious about, the, you know, this is the uniform national s swing projection. This is how the numbers come out. How, in practice, if we had an assembly election with those sorts of vote shares, it would lead to is almost anyone's guess. This is the best guess we can make at the moment. If we got an assembly election result like this, some really interesting post-election dynamics. I mean, the only two-party majority coalition that can be formed is Labour and Plaid Cymru. But notice the Liberal Democrats are back in the game. That now makes other possibilities there. I mean, you could maybe, for instance, combine the Liberal Democrats and Plaid Cymru. That gets you to, what, 22 seats, maybe a minority coalition. That's the sort of thing that's practised in some countries. Oh, because but, in, in um, our time mm, we've seen yeah. Plaid Cymru, the Lib Dems yes. and the Conservatives yeah. almost get there. Yes. Do you think that could happen again? I mean, or well, has politics the, changed so well, much? Well, I think politically, with the Conservatives increasingly moving to being a hard Brexit party and the Liberal Democrats, the, possibly the most ambiguously pro-Remain party, it would be almost impossible to conceive of the Lib Dems now working mm -hmm. in coalition with the Conservatives. But, the um, maths um, work. Right, yes, um, of course. I mean, you add 15 and 11 and 7, that works mathematically. But a minority, but politically, almost certainly a minority not. government of played and the Lib Dems, say, supported in some informal way by another party. That, or, that conceivably could happen, or, or you're looking ply maybe at a Labour ply coalition again. Extraordinary. I mean, you know, that is the only two-party coalition that can possibly, on these numbers, form a majority. So we were just talking about the reasons behind all this just now, yeah. and one of them is Brexit, obviously. Yeah. So um, what is the poll showing us about Brexit and, and how people th th think and feel about well, it? Well, overall, the poll is continuing to show Wales as the UK as a whole, deeply divided over Brexit. And you know, a whole range of questions we've asked in the poll show um, people really continuing to be split. So th this question, for instance, are you in favour or against of a no-deal Brexit? An almost equal split between people supporting and opposing the idea with perhaps unsurprisingly a significant number of people just saying don't know because they're unsure what this would mean. So totally divided. <laughs> Yes, I mean, the, Theresa May used to say some time ago, the country is coming together over Brexit. Well, I don't think that was true when she was saying it, and it certainly isn't true now. Are they, uh, are they the country, whichever country we're talking about, are they <laughs> coming together in support of the new Prime Minister, in support of Boris Johnson, who's uh, embarked on a tour of the Union? Well, recently? indeed, and I believe he's going to be visiting Wales soon. Indeed. I mean, on the whole... The poll lift his party have had from Boris Johnson is not that large. Okay, Boris Bounds. And public opinion is, for the most part, not particularly favourable to Boris Johnson. One of the questions we asked, you know, do, what are your expectations of him as a Prime Minister? More negative than positive. But 
If Boris Johnson can keep most current Conservative voters happy and perhaps reach out to a significant chunk of current supporters for the Brexit party, that may be enough in a deeply divided, deeply split yes. electorate to get the Conservatives enough support to maybe, for instance, win a general election That's if we get one this year. Extraordinary situation uh, to, to find ourselves in. You mentioned a general election this year. Do you think it's now uh, inevitable? Not inevitable, but likely. How likely? Um, I think probably at least a 75% chance we'll 75 have one this year. 75% chance. Uh, I know the, the, the soundings coming out of Boris Johnson's cabinet mm -hmm. is that they don't want one, yes. that they're actually thinking that they could have one in next spring, mm -hmm. but it might get forced on them. That's because of parliamentary maths. Yes, the choice is not necessarily theirs to make. Uh, and you know, the, the Conservatives have at the moment, even with the support of the DEP, only a very tiny parliamentary majority. That could be eroded further in the near future. And there are a significant number of Conservative MPs who are so unhappy at the prospect of a no-deal Brexit that they're even considering, and some of them have talked about, the possibility of voting, you know, supporting a no-confidence vote in the House of Commons, which could bring down the government and trigger a general election. You put a percentage on the general election. Could you put a percentage on a referendum happening? I think a referendum on Brexit right now is less likely than general election, but by no means impossible. OK, well, um, it's been an, it's an extraordinary poll. Yes. You use the word historic. Um, mm. What sort of things will you be looking for in future polls then? What are the trends mm. that we're going to be uh, Well, I think we clearly need to see whether the fragmentation of the parties you know, support amongst the voters spreading so widely continues. We need also, I think, to see what public reaction is to Boris Johnson as the new prime minister. And is he able to sustain any sort of um, honeymoon period with the electorate or will his popularity fade away? And if we continue on the path of the next few weeks and months to a no deal Brexit, what is public reaction, what are public attitudes towards that. OK, Roger, thank you very much. Roger Owen Scully uh, with the details of that extraordinary poll. And you can see, uh, you can go over all those details on our website and we'll be discussing it on our uh, news programmes and politics programmes. Thank you very much for standing here like a pair of weathermen. Yeah. Uh, we'll argue about which one's going to be Michael Fish later. Uh, that shows <laughs> our age, doesn't it? Roger, thank you. I hope you found that useful. Thank you for watching.